Welcome back to my channel everyone. This is Aubrey Morrell. Um, in this video I'm going to be showing you the process of making some test mugs for this large order that I've been working on. Um, and I'm trying something new today with the voiceover so let me know what you think and let's just get into it. So here I am measuring out two pound balls of clay. Um, these will be the mugs and as I've thrown more of these I've actually gotten down to I think um, one pound and 13 ounces so <clears throat> the more I throw the better I've been <laughs> getting at less waste less waste so um, I will get these portioned out and get them all wedged up wedging is definitely not my favorite part of the process but has to be done and since this clay was um, pug milled it doesn't require too much wedging um, you might see me pop a few air bubbles once I start throwing but not a big deal I'm usually able, able to catch those um, this is the throwing portion of the video and uh, I'm going to be posting all of the items that I use in the link as a link in the description. Um, I've kind of just figured out the tools that I like to use over the last year and a half since I started this journey and um, I will just wanted to share those with you guys and just as a disclaimer I am now an Amazon affiliate so any purchases made through the links in the description I will earn a commission on. No pressure from me to buy those, I'm just sharing with you what I uh, like to use and what works for me. Um, but you can see that I had to trim off quite a bit on the top just because I was using too much clay. So that all goes into my waste bucket. <laughs> but that's okay, we do reclaim, and then anything that is reclaimed, I kind of donate to the kids to use for whatever they want to make. Um, they kind of like to have that and have their own stuff, so it works out. Um, I've gotten really used to throwing with a sponge, and there's some back and forth on that, <laughs> on if that's good or bad to kind of rely on that, but for me it works better, uh, it helps to absorb some of the water and it gives me more even pressure as I'm throwing <clears throat> and I'm still not great at throwing, uh, there's a lot that I need to improve on and even since filming this video I've kind of figured out a way to throw to where it doesn't flare out the pot as much, so it's um, a learning process as you guys know. And the more I do it, the, the better I'll get. But through doing this uh, 100 mug order, I expect to learn a lot about repetition and throwing and just the basics in general. So it'll be good for um, growth, for sure. So the reason I am testing these glazes, um, I... When I did my sample mugs, I used the brush on version of those glazes. And uh, since I had to make a hundred of them, I did not want to brush glaze a hundred cups. So here I just wanted to test out the dipping versions, make sure I had the gravity correct before glazing all of those. Um, in this portion of the video, I am working on the handles and you can see me using a handheld extruder which has been a lifesaver my husband got me that as a gift and uh, i could not imagine doing a hundred cups without that at this point i have relied on that way too much but uh so i actually purchased a custom die from etsy and that gives me this shape but I did go to Amazon. Amazon does not have the Shimpo version of this extruder anymore. So I linked the one that I found and it already came with that shape of die. So win-win for you guys. Um, in this portion, I am 
rolling out the clay. Um, and this is where I will be doing the decals for the front of the mugs. And I get it, it's kind of more between an eighth and a quarter of an inch thickness. Uh, I'm not 100% sure because when I lift it up, it kind of thins out a little bit more. But uh, the thinner the better, really, just to make the cup lighter. So that stamp that I'm using there, I actually made myself. And I use it a lot now. And <laughs> it's really fun to use. And I can put any kind of texture under it, which you'll see in a minute. And I do use a lot of cornstarch so that things don't stick. Uh, this is a Western textured rolling pin and I absolutely love it. I have used it a lot and it's it does really well with stuff like this. And you can see it there. If you can see under the cornstarch. <laughs> and I also have these little plastic mats. And they just come in a bulk pack from Amazon. And um, I've used them a lot to make ornaments with. The girls love using those. They're very easy to use. And they're good for small things. So obviously they're not very big. So you wouldn't be able to uh, make like a hand-built mug from those. But they're good for stuff like this where decals or ornaments or something like that. But Cute wood texture, I like that one. And I just wedge up that extra clay. It's got cornstarch in there, which kind of dries it out a little bit. So I just added some water and wedged it up. And now we are to the trimming portion, which is, it is fun, but it is very time consuming for me anyway. <laughs> And these are my favorite tools. I could not do this without those anymore. <laughs> I've come to rely on them. Um, I love the shape of this one because it has a square end and a round end. So you can see that I can kind of cut in a line there. And to make that line a little bit more inset, I use this small one that you see here. And both of those have links down below if you are looking for a new trimming tool. Um, on the feet of these mugs, um, just from practice, when I get to the point where I'm waxing the bottoms, I noticed that if I made a foot with like a, a ledge, then the wax would have like an air bubble and it would pop and it would create a little bubble on the side of the cup. And I did not like that. So, um, I have started just kind of like making a dip in the center of the bottoms and then when I go to do the wax it does not create that bubble and so I just get a cleaner line and adding the handles which is <laughs> another one of the very it's all time consuming but um, this is one of the other time consuming parts for me anyway especially if I'm doing um, I don't know I been doing around 10 cups at a time which is not as many as I would like to do because <laughs> I, I want to get these knocked out but uh, just with my bandwidth with softball and kids and work and all the things that I do um, about 10 cups is what I can manage to get done in a week but um, just adding that decal on the front with the serrated rib. I've tried several different uh, scoring tools. They all work, obviously. I just like that the serrated rib um, does more of a shallow cut. And I do leave my mugs in a damp box overnight before I set them on the shelf upside down. Loading up the bisque. Those are some of the large order mugs. That's why you can't see the logo. <laughs> and then I do a four hour preheat on my stuff just to be safe. And then I just fire it to cone. I program my kiln to cone 03, but it really gets to cone 04. And then when those come out, I will sand them all. That's a diamond sanding pad. And then I will uh, wipe them all down with a damp sponge. 
and I used a stiff bristle brush to uh, get down in that texture because the sponge will not get down in there to get the dust out and the extra clay bits out and here is the waxing portion which I actually really enjoy doing this um, my husband bought me that electric skillet I had watched um, another lady's video on YouTube and um, it was, she did this process and it is so much faster. I was hand waxing all of my feet and the, the lines were not as clean and it took forever. So this new method saves me so much time. Get you an electric skillet and it just takes regular candle wax. Um, I just bought some little tea light candles and they, you throw them in there, you melt them and then just pull the wax or the stems out. And then I'm going to be underglazing inside all of that texture. That is Saks Underglaze Jet Black. And I really like this underglaze because it's fluid. Um, I have a large bottle of Speedball. And it just looks very grainy to me. And it seems to make the glazes over it bubble up. So I have been too afraid to keep using it and trying it. Um, probably need to reach out to support on that one. But... I love this sax under glaze. So I'm just adding the glaze in all of the texture there. And when that is dry, oh well, I have these little squeezy bottles. So this one does not have any texture. It just has the font. So I just, to make less mess, just fill in the font with the squeezy bottle instead. And those are very handy. I actually have one of those with... Um, wax resist in it and then I can do more detailed work with that too. Now I'm just going to wipe back the excess and on the way I'm doing it on these cups it doesn't need to be super clean. If it did, I would have a much larger bucket of water and clean it more often. Uh, but for this purpose, it's fine if it's a little bit messy, just as long as we get the bulk of the excess off of there. And it's at this point, you can see all of that really cute texture. That Western Texture Rolling Pin is probably one of my favorites. And so now we are going to put glaze over the top of uh, those decals on top of the underglaze. And that is Mako's Leather. And I just, it's two coats, but I only do one thick coat around the edges and inside uh, all of the detail and make sure to get in all the crevices um, but on the second coat I'm just lightly brushing the glaze over the top to hit the high points uh, so with leather the thinner that the glaze application is the darker it is so um, by just hitting the high points on that second coat it um, makes the raised portions lighter and it ends up looking really cool This part does take quite a while. <laughs> if you guys have a faster way that you do stuff like this, please let me know because I have to do a hundred of these and, uh, you know, anything to save time. But if this is the best way to do it, I will definitely continue to, um, but yeah, let me know if you have any suggestions. Um, this is um, ceramic supply wax resist that I bought on Amazon a long time ago. And I've tried other wax resists. This one is absolutely my favorite. It's a very fluid wax resist and it dries so much faster and it dries hard. So when you're wiping, um, wiping anything off of it, like if you're dipping glaze like I will be doing, um, it leaves those little beads of glaze 
it wipes off without rubbing the wax off, which I've tried other wax resists and they just seem to ball up or be sticky or tacky. And this one has been amazing. And, um, I'm probably going to need to get some more of it pretty soon because it's about empty, but it works really, really well. You would not be able to use the candle wax for this part just because that candle wax dries so fast once it hits the air. Uh, this uh, ceramic supply wax resist um, has a good dry time, so it's long enough for you to get it applied onto the pot. I'm making sure to put a little bit extra of the wax resist inside the deep portions of the texture just so that when I am dipping it it's easier to wipe off and this is Mako stoned denim which I absolutely love but it was my first time doing the dipping portion and I had to do some trial and error to get the right specific gravity on that I started with a 1.51 1 and I ended up at 1.45 and so you'll see um, at the end when I do the kiln opening, I'll explain all that a little bit more. Hi everyone, it's Aubrey Morrell with Morrell Designs and it has been a minute. I have been extremely busy between work and softball and trying to make this large order that I have. Uh, update on that, I have 26 of the mugs made. I haven't glazed them because I have the test pieces in here. Um, <clears throat> I So the mug that they chose was done with uh, stone denim and seaweed over that, but I did the brushing glazes. And since this order was for a hundred of them, I was gonna do the dip. So um, I bought 30 pounds <laughs> of the stone denim, uh, and then I did, I have three gallons of seaweed, which is way too much, but um, it'll last me a long time. So I've dipped, um, I think I have six mugs in here and then different specific gravities because I did the 1.51 uh, to start with and it was way too thick or it seemed to be way too thick. We'll have to see. Um, so I went from 1.51 down to like, it's. I have the last ones that I did, the specific gravity was like 1.45. So, and then on the, on the label, it recommends 1.47 to 1.51. So I even went a little bit thinner than what was recommended, but it just, the glaze seemed to like be really, really thick. So anyway. This is why we test, right? <clears throat> okay, um, so I'm gonna try and make this short and sweet because I'm exhausted. We've been in a softball tournament all day um, and there's not much in here. So <clears throat> on the top shelf, I had a platter that I've been waiting to fire and um, it turned out really good. That's pretty. Okay, so this is three coats of tourmaline and then three coats of, I'm trying to get the lighting right. So yeah, there you go, that's better. And then three coats of, no, like the three and a half coats, four-ish of ancient copper. I went back and added another coat before I put it in here, I forgot. Uh, slight overlap, that's what this mm -hmm, kind of muddy color is here. But I did some slip trailing all around the edge. Here's the back, and it didn't crack, and it didn't warp, it's flat. I don't know how I managed, it's like super flat. Sweet. All right. Um, my daughter made, oh, there's my stilt. Okay. My daughter made a butterfly, I have a butterfly stamp that I got off Amazon and I can put a link to that in the description. So um, this kiln opening is gonna be at the end of a video of my test pieces from start to finish from the 
wedging stage all the way to completed. So everything that I used to make those, I'll put links to uh, in the description of the video, but it looks like she put shipwreck on there, which we don't use very much, but it looks cool. Trying to get the light. So I have an, I put my ring light on my tripod because I didn't, I didn't know I could do that. <laughs> Trying to, let's see which lightning looks better. Yellow. I think the yellow one might actually look best. Maybe. I don't know. Mix it. I don't know. I like that one. Cool. Um, and then my youngest made what she calls a spoon rest. Uh, this is for her teacher. But she rolled the bee texture and then she hand put the um, edge on there and then smushed it down and all the cuteness. But... <laughs> she also made a little moon. So this is, um, I actually used her moon as a test because I have just got some purple crystal glaze in from Amico, which is on the bottom here. I had never had it before, but I'm making some purple marble mugs and I wanted a purple glaze and that one looks really pretty and it's the right color of purple. So I wanted to test it, but it's, uh, it's pretty where it gets thicker is where you get the crystals for sure. And then I think she put, uh, Indigo float on the other side, but there's not enough coats on there. She's impatient. <laughs> okay, compact for the top shelf. Looks like about a five and a half, which is what I normally get. Let me get my stilts out. And this is the part I've been waiting for because if none of these look right, then I have to go back to the drawing board. Okay, where is the first mug? That first mug, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sh try to show them to you in order of glaze thickness. So, specific gravity 1.51, which is the thicker glaze, less water. Um, I believe is this one. Okay, yep. So, um, it actually doesn't look bad, not bad at all, uh, but you can definitely see some parts, like there's glaze there, there's glaze over that, but it kind of crawled. Um, so I did, this was a three second dip in that really thick glaze, so... Uh, I'm curious to see what the next one looks like. And then I just did, so my seaweed is brush on seaweed, but I put it, I poured two, two of the gallons into a two gallon bucket so that I could dip into it. I didn't add any water to it. Um, I just dipped the rim in that brush on seaweed and that part honestly looks great. I, I can tell that there, that the stone denim, the blue was just too thick. I think because it did that and it did it right here and then there's one little pinhole right there but um it honestly does not look near as bad as I thought it would this is actually still a good cup um there's no crawling inside so yeah you see in there okay that's the, oh, there's another piece right there that kind of crawled. Um, okay, next. I'm going to try and keep these in order. So, let me move that. All right. <clears throat> next. Um, this one, I, this next one, I don't know exactly what the specific gravity was, but I just added a little bit of water. Um, I'm trying to guess how much. It was probably like a quarter of a pint, so not a whole lot. Um, let's look at it together. So it's a little bit better. Still like one spot right there. I'm wondering if that's where the uh, 
tongs were when I dipped? I don't know. The inside looks good. The handle looks fine. Hmm. Okay, so um, my, it's better already, but still I've got the one spot here. <clears throat> um, on the on all of these stamps, I did Saks Tuxedo Black underglaze inside the texture, and then I did two coats of leather by Mako on top. Just so you know. Okay, we're getting there. Those are so cute, though. I love those mugs. Okay, the next one. Um, again, I just added like a quarter. Oh, that one does not look as good. Okay. Man, it's so hard to tell what I what I've done wrong. Okay, this one I added a little bit of water. Again, a three second dip. Look at all this right here. I noticed there were some times when, so like, uh, I dipped it and then the so I had to I glazed these first and then put wax over them, so that when I dipped them that it would go away from the wax but because the glaze was so thick it wouldn't just like melt off the wax like it's supposed to so I kind of took a sponge and wiped over it like that and I th think on a couple of them I accidentally hit this part and it kind of wiped it off but I dipped my finger in the glaze and I tried to like put it back on there and I think that's why it did that on this one so note to self don't do that <laughs> um I think next time it'd be better if I just let it completely dry and then go back and clean off these waxed parts. I don't know. But I did a Western texture on that one. Again, black underglaze and then leather. But, and then I did, oh, let's see. On this one, I did the seaweed as asymmetrical. So like I dipped it um, kind of like this almost instead of just flat. So you can see where it started to run a little bit more, which it looks cool. But like, uh, these first two, I just did the dip like level like that. Um, cool. Both look fine. I just gotta get this stone denim figured out. Okay, next one is, again, I added a little bit of water, not much. Um, and then I only did a, so on all of those first three, I did like a three second dip on the seaweed. And again, I didn't add any water to the seaweed. On this one, I just did a one second dip on the seaweed, like just a quick bloop in the bucket. But again, asymmetrical. But you can see, again, still a little bit of crawling in some spots. It's not as bad here. Again, I tried to wipe it, and I think I did that. <laughs> um, the rest of it looks good. The stone denim actually looks better on this one, though. Except for that one spot. But I think it's just, I gotta figure out how to dip it right. I'm new to dipping, so... Um, but the little stamp looks cool. I put a flower texture on that one. How cool is that? But it, on all of the insides of these, they're great. So I'm like just a little bit, I don't know. Don't know what to do. Okay, um, these last two, the specific gravity was 1.45. And then I did something different. So let me figure out the wood texture one. Okay, cookie, uh, yeah, stone denim looks good on this one. There is like the tiniest and that could, I think that might have just been like dust or something. I don't know, but, and then, um, the seaweed on this one, I did a one second dip on the seaweed here and I only did like the top. I Maybe I can post a picture at the end of, cause I took a picture of all of them after they were glazed. Uh, 
Uh, this one actually looks pretty good though. The inside looks great. This is that new shape. Isn't that cute? I love these. Okay, last one. So on this one, I did, this is the 1.45 specific gravity. And then I did a three second dip on the seaweed. You really can't tell much difference. I'll hold them up next to each other in a second, but the stone denim looks really good on it. So I think the 1.45 is gonna work for me. That's working. Looks like I might have missed a patch <laughs> of glaze on the inside. I did not look very well. Can you see it? Let me see if I can find it in here. See that white patch in there? I didn't even look. Ugh. I guess this is mine. I will test it, and then if it's fine, I'll keep it. <laughs> if, it's, if it holds water, I'll keep it for a little while. Um, but I think that's going to be the winner. Did I get the inside of that one good? Nope. Same thing. Man. How did I miss that? Oh, okay. I take it back on the seaweed. So this one here was the one second dip. And this one here is the three second dip. It's just got a more saturated color. I don't know if you can tell that on camera, but the three second is more saturated in color. Like, cause you can see that one's a little patchy. This one's not, but okay. That I feel better about the stone denim though. That's the one I was worried about. I think I, so that will work. Um, and I think it's just the shape of these mugs that when I was dipping them, I didn't turn it like I'm supposed to. Again, I'm new to dipping, but these were test mugs. I knew I had hoped that they would all work out and that I could like sell them or keep them, but they are tests. So I knew I would have maybe have to part ways with them. So it's okay, but they're really cute. Awesome. That's cool. I'll have to make more of that shape. If I'm gonna try one out, but I like that shape. Okay, cone pack and then we're done. Uh, bottom shelf got uh, a little bit hotter, almost a cone six, but that's where most of the space was and there was more stuff down there. So that makes sense. Okay, well, um, thank you guys for watching. And uh, if you have any tips or pointers on using dipping glazes, I would be more than happy to read those. <laughs> I'll take all the advice I can get. Um, especially before I start glazing this a hundred mug order, I do not want to have to redo. So, <laughs> um, thank you guys so much. And again, um, on all these things that I made, I will post the links to those in the description so that if you like any of that stuff that you can find it. Um, and I will be seeing you guys pretty soon. So until next time, Bye.